Hi there folks, today let's talk about the difference between a master's and a PhD thesis. There are a couple of important differences to keep in mind, and I think knowing about this difference is important as you transition from a master's to a PhD. Now, time is the most obvious difference. You have completely different periods of time to complete a master's thesis versus a PhD thesis. In Germany, for example, the time for a master's thesis is about six months, and for a PhD it's about three or four years. Of course, these times vary from country to country and uh, depending on the different conditions for these different degrees, but always the PhD is a much longer period of time than the master's. There's also a difference in status, that is, in Germany, for example, master students are primarily considered students rather than graduate students. That means they're typically not paid, whereas PhD students usually receive a salary or a stipend. That is different in other countries, but there's definitely also a difference in status. As a consequence of that, there are typically a lot fewer resources for funding for master students compared to resources for funding for PhD students, for example, in Europe. Now, a very big content difference between a master's and a PhD is that for a PhD there is really an expectation for novelty, whereas there isn't that much of an expectation for novelty for a master's thesis. Now the main reason for that is that during a master's you simply cannot really repeat things as things fail. You only have a limited period of time, for example, in, as I said in Germany about six months, so if things don't work out the first time, you simply do not have time to repeat things. This means that you are less likely to do something very novel, but more likely to do something that is gonna have the potential to give you some results, um, but it's mostly an extension of already existing work. For example, it may be work with a different plant or plant or with a different soil type or with different combinations of factors that have already been used before, or different environmental settings, for example. So it's mostly um, an extension of stuff that's already known. Whereas for a PhD, there really is the expectation to do something novel, in the sense that that doesn't exist, and it also adds to the literature in a significant way. You also have the time to do that during a PhD, because you have a long enough period of time available and the expectation is for you to produce something that is at least in principle publishable or in also many degree programs that has to be published. The next point concerns independence. As a PhD student, you're expected to be actually quite independent, maybe not from the very beginning, but at least towards the end, you are supposed to find what's, well, interesting to you, what brings the science forward, where the gaps are that need to be filled, where is the unknown, basically. Whereas during a master's, there is simply not enough time to explore that. And so typically a question is handed to you and you're supposed to work on this particular point um, for your degree. So there really is a vast difference in the expectation for independence. The next point is complexity. You can think of a PhD as a rather complex multi-year project that you have to somehow manage that gets increasingly complex because you have to juggle various things. You know, maybe there is teaching as part of your assignment, definitely is research. You have to learn new techniques. Uh, maybe you have to go other places to carry out certain measurements. You have to build your professional network. So you have to really multitask and these tasks become more and more complex as you go along because then you have to more and more do statistical analyses and writing and publishing and so on and so forth. So I think that the portfolio of tasks that you have to master, that you're expected to master, is quite a, much, quite a lot higher than um, for a master's degree. During your master's degree, you are working on the question that you are basically given. You learn the techniques that are already basically established in the lab. In most cases, you just apply them and then you are focused on writing that thesis which may or may not be published depending on your expectations in your program. And then finally, responsibility and leadership. There's basically not much of an expectation for um, leadership and also to take responsibility for the work you do in the broader sense during a master's degree because you are basically just the executive agent that carries out a question that you're being handed to. I mean, that can still be very interesting and there's still plenty of opportunity to be creative and to be and to excel at what you're doing, so I don't want to sell that short. But 
during a PhD degree, you have a much greater degree of responsibility. Basically, you are the person that is driving progress in a certain area. You're responsible for knowing the literature in that field. You have to ensure that what you're doing is novel and answers a certain question. Of course, you don't do that without help, right? You have mentors and a committee that guide you through this process, but in the end, it is your responsibility. Responsibility can take on also different forms. For example, as you progress through your PhD degree, uh, you will be also increasingly be asked to take on responsibility, for example, for training bachelor's and master's students or also for guiding um, beginning PhD students. So you are transitioning to um, a leadership role in science. And this is what it's about. It's about educating the next generation of leaders. So I think those are the main differences between a master's degree and a PhD degree. And as you can tell, they are, they're quite major. So I think um, some of the trouble that people get into in the beginning of their PhD is that they think this is just going to be a continuation of the mode they were in for their master's. But in fact, it's not. The, there is quite a step change in the expectations um, in leadership role and all the other aspects that I talked about uh, from a master's to a PhD. And knowing this, I think, will help you start a PhD with a realistic expectation of what's to come and will help you succeed. And with that, thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one. Bye.